I came. How can I make fun of San Francisco when I live in Atlanta? The southeastern headquarters. A lot of gay people in Atlanta. And they all have jobs as waiters. You ever notice that? <laughs> no, really. You walk in one of them spiffy restaurants, one of them places where they put too much sauce on the food and don't cook the green beans. <laughs> they cook their tomatoes and they don't cook the green beans. <laughs> what is this? Isn't it? And you walk in, and I can't mention a name in them places because that would be libelous, okay? But the <laughs> it's one of them, I guess. <laughs> Don't, don't say I said that, all right? No, but you all been, and you walk in, you know, and you ain't bother nobody. You just stand in there, and one of them fruit flies spot you. <laughs> Come sashaying. Walking about this far off the ground. You ever know something? <laughs> Looked like they're trying to carry a corn cob without using their hands. You know? <laughs> I believe I got my people tonight. I, but no, you know, you've been through it. You've been through it a hundred times. You're standing there, you know, and, and a guy comes over to you and he always says the same thing. Hi, I'm Keith. I'll be your waiter this evening. I never know what to say. Hi, Keith. I'm Lewis. I'll be your customer, you know. As far as I'm on go, though, Jack, I guarantee you that. I always get in trouble. And I write about gays in the paper. Oh, God. I, I tell myself, do not write about gays in the paper. If you write about gays, then we're going to get all that hate mail, you know? I can't help it. I just can't help it. I mean, there's so much fun to mess with, you know? <laughs> I love to get, you know, we're out of the closet. That's great. I bet there's a mess in that closet before they all got out of there. I'm always afraid to open my closet door. I'm afraid to be when I'm doing something weird to my tennis shoes in there. You gotta watch out for gay bars, you know, there are a lot of gay bars in Atlanta. You might by mistake wander into one of them things, okay? Happened to me. I wandered into a gay bar by mistake. I asked the bartender for a double. He sent out a guy who looked just like me. Two gay men attacked a woman on the streets of Atlanta the other day. Horrible thing. Two gay men attacked a woman on the streets of Atlanta. One of them held her down, the other one did her hair. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I don't understand the women's movement. This got me totally confused. The women's movement has me confused. You know, I'm always getting in trouble to women, too. I don't mean to do that, you know. Like uh, when they finally nominated Geraldine Ferraro for, you know, Walter Mondale's running mate. And I said the first time I heard the name Geraldine Ferraro, I thought it was Flip Wilson's sports car. I was convinced. <laughs> Woman came up to me at a speech and said, I read your column. Apparently you do not believe in women's liberation. I said, au contraire, my dear. I've given three of their freedom myself. I got no problem with this. I have three ex-wives. I, I admit to you openly without shame. They were all good old girls, too. I can't recall any of them's names right offhand. I call them all plaintiff. I tell you something, they all had something in common. When they left, they all backed up a truck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> First one got my Fire and Young albums. Next one took my Naga hide couch. We had to kill over 150 little Nagas to get that much hide. <laughs> Last one took my dog. A woman will take your dog or cut you, I guarantee you.
I didn't know how bad things had gotten. The other day, I saw a bumper sticker on I-285. It said, Honk, if you've been married to Louis Grizzard. Just think. <laughs> You know, you got to blame this on somebody. You know, why I'm 38 years old? Why in the world can I stay married? You know, why have I got three ex-wives? I'm only 38 years old, for goodness sake. there got to be a reason for this. I blame the whole thing on my mama. <laughs> you know, my mama is a perfect southern lady. She's 73 years old, and she spoiled me. I admit that openly without shame. I was my mama's baby boy. I come from a big family. Matter of fact, I never got to sleep alone until I was married. At night, when I went to bed, when I lived with my mama, I would take my drawers off and I would throw them on the floor. For months, I thought them things were sprouting legs and walking in there. It was my mama handling them drawers. She was washing them and ironing them things. After I got married, I would throw my drawers on the floor. They would lay there six and seven weeks at a time. We'd grow houseplants in these things. Huh? My mother's still concerned about my the drawers. Went down to see her the other day. I started to leave. She's down in Morgan. Mama said, where are you going, son? I said, Mama, I got to go to New York City. She said, let me ask you a question. I said, what is it? She said, you wear and clean under drawers. I said, Mama, why do you ask me a question like that? I'm a grown man. She said, you might be in a wreck. I said, Mama, if I see a big truck coming at me, I ain't going to have no clean under drawers anyway. You know? I worried about that, that I'd be in a wreck. But, you know, the more I think about it, you really think doctors care. Um, I go out here and I get run over by semi-hauling hogs, okay? And it take me to the emergency room, and I'm laying out there on a log, white table, bleeding from every pore of my body. Not one, but two doctors stand over me. And one doctor says, oh, doctor, this man's in bad shape. The other says, yeah, Lord, but ain't his underdrawers clean. I mean... <laughs> You know, one of the regrets I have in my life, uh, I've done a lot of things. One of the regrets, I never had any children. You know, I kind of always wanted to have children. I never had any. I had some stepchildren one time for just a brief uh, period. And, uh, but I had fun with them. They were great kids. You know, I got to know a lot about children. And they, and they, you know, they were little kids. I had a little, uh, little girl about uh, five and a little boy about three. And they really were good kids. But kids, you know, I'd never been around. I didn't, and, and I tell you, they'll do some bad stuff. One time, I heard them talking back in the bathroom, you know. And the little old boy said, the little girl said, uh, you know any bad words? And she said, I know one. He said, what is it? She said, damn. I said, boy, that's, that's great. She said, you know any bad words? And he said, yeah, I know one. So how many letters got? I said, three. I said, what is it? He said, ass. And one little girl said, I'll tell you what let's do. In the morning, when Mama comes down and asks us what we want for breakfast, let's use our bad words and see what she does. Now, I could have headed this thing off, you see. But I was intrigued, so I just waited. Next morning, they sit there at the table. Little girl sitting there, and the mama came over and said, Well, what would you like for breakfast this morning? She said, I don't know, mama. I believe I'll have some of them damn Cheerios. Her mother backhanded her like John McEnroe, took her right off the table with top spin on that thing. That child rolled all in the jello everywhere, come out down between two house plants, laying there hurt bad. She turned to the little boy and said, What do you want? He said, I don't know, mama. I bet your sweet ass ain't gonna be no Cheerios, I guess. <laughs> 